intelligent and philosophically inclined should endeavor only for that purposeful end, which is not obtainable even by wandering from the topmost planet of Brahmaloka down to the lowest planet, the Talaloka. As far as happiness derived from sense enjoyment is concerned, it can be attained automatically in course of time. Just in course of time, we obtain miseries, although we do not desire them. Okay, so this verse is speaking some uh, kind of sweeping statements regarding what an intelligent person should be endeavoring for and what an intelligent person should avoid. And here he makes a point, and this is confirmed by Krishna in the eighth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, that um, no matter what material position you're in, whether it's a nice material position, of course, even the Shrutis, the Vedas, uh, Rig Veda also mentions one should uh, aspire for a better situation in life. But um, all situations, as expo expo explained by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, Abrahma Bhuvana Loka Purna Arita Arjuna. Mamupeti Puna Janman Naiti Mameti Surjuna. And Krishna says that all these situations, um, they're still accompanied by birth, death, disease, and old age. These material miseries are built into the material energy, no matter where one may find themselves. Of course, in some places, disease is hardly uh, there. And old age is not like it is on certain planets. On all planets, people don't necessarily become decrepit when they get old. But generally, to take birth, as is explained in the Bible time, and to die, is uh, foreign for the soul. The soul is by nature eternal. And so to take birth and to die is uh, not part of the soul's nature. It's extra. It's when the soul gets covered by material energy. The soul is called tatasta. Tatasta means marginal. It means it could go towards the spiritual and it could go towards the material. There is the material and there's the spiritual and the marginal, we can use an example. You go down to a beach and you see the waves coming in from the ocean. Sometimes when you go down there, you'll see the beach is covered with water and other times that same area the water doesn't go there. So sometimes it's that area is open and sometimes that area is covered with water. That's called tatasta, it's marginal. So in the same way our existence in this material world is that we can move either towards the spiritual or stay within the material. We are marginal. And so any place in this material existence, as Krishna says, is temporary, which is completely opposite the soul. And therefore, this verse even says that from the highest planet to the lowest, all are the same, pretty much, in the sense that there are the there are mis material miseries are there, some more or less. And, and in the material world, happiness is seen in two features of itself. There's happiness and then there's mixed happiness and distress. Or miseries and mixed happiness are two features of the material life. 
even in the higher planetary systems, there is to some degree, some degree of suffering. And ultimately one must give up that position. And then when one gives that position up, um, Shinya Purnya Marja Loka Vishanti. That means they come back again to material energy in a lower position and have to again begin their struggle in material life. So this verse, and so what about people who encourage, just like the modern society encourages, get a good job. Um, therefore, you can get some good remuneration. You first get a good education, get you a good job, and get some remuneration. And then, when you have that money, you can you can determine how how nice you want to live. You get good education, you get good opulences like that. But these things are not. The, the things that can satisfy. They might give some temporary pleasure in this sense that one doesn't have to suffer like other people are suffering, but at the same time, still, those the miseries of birth, death, disease, and old age, miseries of the body and mind, miseries of other living entities, and miseries of higher powers, uh, always accompany the living entity in any situation they are in. Hmm. So people in different levels have to work according to their different grades of life. So if you're born in a certain situation, you work according to that situation. But the idea is not to try to make that situation or propagate that situation, expand that situation, because all material positions are impermanent. And uh, therefore one that says here, one who is a actually intelligent, even if they can go to the highest material planet, Brahmaloka, where life is quite long compared to what we live on this planet, it's all relative according to the time factor because the higher you go in the material realms, slower time is. So 100 years of Brahma's life is um, 311 trillion, 40 billion Earth years, like that. But everything is relative. So just like Brahma lives for a hundred years, that's all according to his time uh, element. And we live a hundred years or up to, hardly anybody lives that long nowadays, but up to a hundred years according to our time element also. Prabhupada would also use the example just like an ant or an insect. One insect may take birth in the evening and by the, the morning it has gone through its whole life and so it no longer is living. So for that insect, that overnight stay in our, in our time is the hundred years of that insect. So time is relative. Time is relative. So this first part of the verse is uh, giving us clear understanding that there's a place where you don't have to wander from place to place because um, no situation in this material world is permanent. Everything is temporary and everything is always changing and no, no one can guarantee anything because material energy is also mutable. Mutable means changeable and therefore at any situation can occur where uh, the whole material scheme we have worked for is finished within a few moments. Well, this is the material world. And then the second half of the verse is, is quite interesting. It says, as far as happiness derived from sense enjoyment is concerned, it can be obtained automatically in course of time. 
just as in course of time we, we obtain miseries, even though we do not desire them. So this verse is interesting because it really helps you to become peaceful uh, in the sense that people are always trying to increase happiness and push away misery. But the scriptures say karma daiva netrena. According to one's birth, according to one's activities, and the previous life, one takes birth in this life. So no one is born as a blank slate. Everyone has their karma account with them when they come in. And based on that karma account, one is destined to receive so much, so much material happiness and so much material distress. We see that clearly. People are born in one particular good material situation, good by material definitions, and others are born in a very obscure and very pitiable situation. It's all due to one's karma. And so that karma also is also there in terms of life karma. So that means you know, everyone can only get so much material happiness and they can only get so much material distress. They can change. This is the point of what we say you have some free will. You can change how your happiness and distress comes, but you can't change the amount. For instance, uh, you might be living in a cold area, so you might decide to move to a warm area to avoid the suffering of the cold. And so you might say, well, I, I'm in a better material situation. But your karma will force you to suffer in another way, which is due according to your birth. In other words, happiness and distress can be changed how it comes. You, the amount is fixed. The only way the amount is not fixed is when you, one takes to devotional service. Because when one takes the devotional service, as explained in the Nectar Devotion, uh, one's uh, dest material destiny is changed. One works now under the Paraprakriti, or the, in instead of the Aparaprakriti, the transcendental energy, the Daivi Shakti, and in this spiritual energy, one's material happiness and distress is gradually being eradicated. Not only the, the stress, but also one's material happiness. And it's being replaced by transcendental happiness, which comes by way of devotional service to the Supreme. So that is the only way. Otherwise, to, to juggle the material energy or to try to find a better material situation to avoid happiness and distress uh, is a futile attempt, it's simply a waste of time. Therefore, one should accept one the material situation according to one's situation in life, what is one's required needs, and cultivate Krishna consciousness. Uh, I think in general, we find that devotees spend too much time trying to improve their material situation. We can try to adjust our material situation in order to facilitate our Krishna consciousness. Just like one might be living away from a temple. So one thinks, let me move close to a temple. And that way I can go to the functions, I can take part in the activities. That is, that's activity in relationship to one's spiritual development. And therefore, these are, these kinds of adjustments are acceptable because it's related to one's spiritual advancement. But on the material level, one who simply tries to find a better material situation will find that every material situation 
has a particular downside. Uh, you might change one material situation to another. You're just changing the type of how the, the different kind of misery will come one form or another, like that. Or the happiness, it'll come in one form or another. Like that. So, and the verse also says, to prove the point, and we all experience this, no one tries for miseries, but they come automatically. No one plans to have misery, but yet it comes for some reason. So the verse is explaining just like misery comes automatically, happiness will also come automatically. Material happiness or material satisfaction, which looks like happiness, but it's just uh, a, a little bit above material suffering. Itself. So Prabhupada's talking about not wasting time, simply juggling our material situations to try to improve our material happiness. And time is a, a very important factor of existence. In fact, whatever time we have in this body is allotted to us so we can become Krishna conscious. If we waste that time, we're making it more difficult and even less likely that we'll become Krishna conscious. So we shouldn't waste time. Wasting time means endeavoring in flimsy things that don't really have any solid basis in our overall success in life. Mm, juggling the material energy. So this verse is very interesting. The purport is quite lengthy, but it has so many good points that we can also focus on. So everyone is destined to suffer and enjoy materially, but everyone is meant to take up spiritual life because that is the purpose. And once you take up spiritual life and live in a way that facilitates one's spiritual life, that kind of endeavor is, a, is, a, is noteworthy. One should see how to facilitate my material existence, my arrange my material existence to facilitate my uh, spiritual development, my spiritual growth. Like that. Uh, that that can be done. That should be done like that. And so sometimes adjustment is there like that. As we mentioned, uh, you know, moving closer to a temple and having more time for spiritual life. Okay, so these are some succinct points on this particular verse. And we have many examples uh, where happiness has come automatically. We'll give you an example of how what perceives to be something that's going to bring happiness doesn't bring happiness because of a person's karma. For instance, specifically in the United States of America, they have this thing called the lottery. Maybe they have it in other countries too, but I've never seen it. It's a, it's a kind of a gambling program where you can walk into a grocery store and you pay a dollar or two and you you get a ticket with a number on it. And at a certain time in the month, there is a drawing. And if they draw your number, you win like millions of dollars. And so there have been many people who have won. And um, so there was a survey done to follow up on the winners after many, many years. And the survey actually showed that most people who won the lottery, their lives became worse. Um, they were harassed by family members. They were either, their lives were threatened. Um, they used the money uh, for sinful activities and they suffered. In so many ways, the money never brought them the happiness that they thought it would. Why? Because they're under the influence of the material energy 
and therefore their karma played itself out. So what looked like, so sometimes we see that also. We think, oh, I want to marry this beautiful girl. She's so nice, or this very uh, debonair guy. And so we go for it, and then we wind up uh, two years later, we're in divorce court. So, yeah, it's not, you can't ever tell in material life what's going to be the source of happiness or what's the source of distress. So what is the endeavor we should we make in material life? Is there any endeavor? And there's one verse in the Bhagavad, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, and I'll read it. It's actually from the second chapter. It says, Life's desires should never be directed towards sense gratification. One should desire only a healthy life or self-preservation, since a human being is meant for inquiry about the absolute truth. Nothing else should be the goal of one's work. And so... You keep body and soul together, in other words, to stay physically strong, healthy, is some endeavor that we, we can make. Why? Because self-preservation is natural. And that self-preservation will allow us to uh, use our time for inquiry into spiritual topics. So yeah, that's why Srila Prabhupada many times not many times, always, when he wrote his letters, he'd sign it, uh, hoping this meets you in the best of health. Your ever well-wisher, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. So, uh, yeah, keeping health is a principle of endeavor. You keep good health, just like we're now amidst this coronavirus. So everyone is taking precautions not to become infected. And that is natural. But, and that should be done by everyone, no matter what situation in life you're in. But at the same time, only those who use that time to endeavor into the absolute truth will find benefit in this human form of life. So we should not delve in excess in our material arrangements simply to improve uh, material opulences. If op material opulences will automatically come, automatically, just like, I don't know if this is a good example, but uh, it's, an, it's, it's something that I just thought of, let's see. I, of course, I have a, a deity here of Haridas Thakur and uh, so I offer him every morning uh, boga in the form of dried fruit and nuts. And so I keep a variety of these items, a nice variety. And then I offer that in the morning. In, at lunchtime, he gets uh, the cooked meal that is performed by the temple as the boga. Not the boga, but the prashadam. So at lunch, he gets a nice meal of prashadam from the deities. And in the evening, I just offer him a sweet. But for the morning, I have this variety of dried fruit and nuts. Now, I haven't purchased any of it. Now, I have a cabinet that is stocked full of dried fruits and nuts. And just like today, someone walked in with about five or six packages of uh, dried fruits and then said, this is for Haridash. So I have enough stock of dried fruit and nuts for at least 25 years. <laughs> the cabinet just fills up with, I mean, I could give it away, but I haven't. But anyway, what I'm saying is I don't make any endeavor. People know, oh, well, here, Harry does need some dried fruit and nuts, so they bring it. Who inspires them to bring it? Krishna within the heart, so they can do some service like that. But I don't have to worry about thinking about, go out and buy it, 
like that. It just comes, comes automatically. So for a devotee, we find that if you're engaged in devotional service, Krishna will provide everything you need to live nicely. And at the same time, um, have enough time to cultivate Krishna consciousness. So the more we endeavor in our spiritual life, the more Krishna becomes pleased, and the more he becomes pleased, he likes to reciprocate his devotees. Not only does he give them bhakti, and the knowledge that comes by way of bhakti, but he many times he fortifies their material life by making arrangements for their happiness on that level also. That's Krishna. <laughs> That's Krishna. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people come to me with concerns about their material life. I can't give them what we say, a clear uh, solution, but I say just continue in your Krishna consciousness. Serve the Lord nicely and do course the time that Krishna wants, he will provide everything you need. There's no need to make separate endeavors or even to worry about it. That's, that's Krishna. He's grateful for his devotee's service and so he provides everything they need and more without the devotee even asking. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to worry. So when you give up material life or you give up the endeavor to enjoy material life or to increase material life, you just give up a lot of unnecessary time wasting. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's any questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, all Guru Shila Prabhupada, all glories to you Maharaj. Thank you so much for the wonderful session Maharaj. It was really, really very nice. And uh, what you said, I just want to comment it that it's really so true that Krishna is time and he, he makes all the arrangement. And I have personally like so many times witnessed in my life as in because of full time job so many times I feel like I want to do this, I want to do this service or something or Krishna somehow or other the arrangement change or my working pattern, my meetings moved and uh, it just things happens and uh, Krishna reciprocate and you get the chance to do what you need to do and uh, you also get time to spend time with your family. So it's really amazing how Krishna, you know, just work around uh, your life and uh, make things happen. Uh, so it's really nice reminded that Krishna is always, he takes charge of you when, uh, you know, we want to do something for him. So it's beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Prabhupada would say, what can you hold in two hands that Krishna is giving you with 10? Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> It's so nice. I want to give you an example. I've got now big deities like uh, to, uh, you gave the name uh, very kindly, Gandharvika Girdhari. And uh, from last one month, I've been like, when they came, I was very worried about their dressing and how will I look after them. And uh, it's, uh, it's to, me, to my surprise that I'm getting an hour extra every day to just do something with them, <laughs> just maybe change their turban or do something. <laughs> it's so, it's beautiful. Like, Krishna is giving time. I don't know how it just gets increased or what happens or it's yeah. amazing. It's the devotees have testified so many times that the more you endeavor in Krishna consciousness, you see how more and more time you have for more and more things. It's as if Krishna expanded time. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you.
scroll on this. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, I've got a little bit of confusion in my mind and I just wanted to ask you this question. So Krishna, the battle of Kurukshetra is telling Arjuna, do your duty. So in this material world right now in Kali Yuga, we are doing our duty. We are working very hard. Um, but in recent Prabhupada lectures that I've listened to, Prabhupada often makes a statement, like you said, Guru Maharaj, that this education, this material education is useless. And really, spiritual education should be the basis of um, the world's education. So I'm a little bit confused. On one hand, I'm thinking, you're right, Guru Maharaj, and Prabhupada is also right, saying that you know you shouldn't pay too much attention to this world. But then Krishna is giving Arjun the same commentary and saying, you must do your duty. And yet we are always working hard in this material world. Yeah, but Arjun is a Kshatriya. And therefore he's meant to fight on religious principles. So he's refusing it from that point. And he's uh, trying to become a Brahmin instead of a Kshatriya. By not fighting. And Krishna calls him a fool because he, and he says, because you are meant to serve in that way, when you don't, you'll be criticized. Uh, we have our material duty, that's called Swadharma, but that can change. Ultimately, our real duty is to become Krishna conscious. Our only duty is to become Krishna conscious. How we live our material life is supportive of our body and mind, that's all, in which way be necessary. So it doesn't mean that we have to do a particular type of service. We just have to somehow maintain ourselves. So maintenance is there for the brahmacharis, for the sannyasis, for the vanaprastas. The krihastas have to make a little effort, those who are living family life, to procure a little bit of pecuniary uh, uh, gain in order to establish family life. But the purpose of that is to become Krishna conscious. So well, everything comes back to that one purpose, become Krishna conscious. So whether you do your material duty in one occupation or another occupation, it really doesn't matter. When you have to find that situation in your life that works for you, which supports your needs and at the same time allows you a sufficient amount of time for spiritual practice. Yeah. So, I mean, if you have a family, you have to do your duty to your family. That's, that's there. So there is family duties like that. That's the basis of the, the duties and the duties that extend themselves out from the family in order to maintain the family are also changeable. But family duties, you can, one cannot give up, what we say arbitrarily or whimsically. One must stay in their ashram and perform the duties of the ashram, like that. So if you're an administrator or a warrior, you're pretty much living pretty much Kshatriya duties. If you're a philosopher, poet, like that, you're doing Brahminical duties mostly. If you're a mercantile person who is out making money, then you're made pretty much as a Vaishya. And if you're just working at any old job to get a particular type, to get a salary, then you're doing the work of a Sudra. But the important part is 
these uh, these occupational duties in the material sense are meant to be used for for our sanatan dharma our eternal dharma which is to become uh, a servant of the supreme personality of godhead so anyway everyone has to choose some occupation for those of us in we have to lie. They have to choose some occupation and work at it. But then one has to live according to one's needs. The problem is, in the material world, when you are engaged in occupations working under another, some material authority, they have no concern about your spiritual life. Their only concern is what you can give to them in form in the form of helping them make money in the business that they're in so and therefore they will take advantage of your abilities and skills and try to uh, what we say extend that increase that to get more and more time and energy out of you that is the danger so Prabhupada wanted this Van Arshram system where devotees would work within the context of devotee society and make uh, enough money or material gain so they can support themselves in their family life and then being in association with devotees just like a good example of that is the Bhaktivedanta hospital in uh, in Mumbai so 25 doctors got together and they started a hospital. And so all the doctors, these are all devotees and they work all together. They administer medical care to people in general. It's become a full fledged running hospital. It's a low cost hospital, but the atmosphere in the hospital is very Krishna conscious where they, they break twice or three times a day and everybody gathers in a room to chant the Shikshastakam prayers and speak some spiritual messages. And all the doctors are devotees. So that's, that's Van Ashram at his best, where they're all working together at, a, at their occupation, making money for their family, and at the same time, in association with each other. So you know, if you study that, um, one of my disciples is, um, I think she's online now. I won't mention her name, maybe she won't want me to. But she's uh, writing a book on Bhaktivedanta Hospital, which is about to come out very soon. And uh, that book will show this uh, Daivi Van Ashram at its best and some of the amazing stories connected with that hospital. So that's one example. Lawyers could get together and start their own life law firm, devotee lawyers like that. In fact, that we, in fact, I was just talking to one devotee he was telling me that, yeah, 10 lawyers are working together now in our Krishna conscious society to help develop our whole uh, legal internal structure. So yeah, they're working at their occupation, but they're working for Krishna, serving Krishna through that occupation. That's what Prabhupada wanted. Not that we work for some secular boss uh, well, that's the way the situation is now. If you have to, and there's no alternative, then do it, but make sure you have enough time for your Krishna consciousness. And don't take jobs that cause you to break the four regulative principles. Just like I had one disciple, he owned a grocery store, and he, had, he said that unless I sell alcohol, and cigarettes, 
nobody buys anything. So they all come in for alcohol and cigarettes and then they buy so many other things. So that was the way his business was going. And finally, I encouraged him to sell the business after so many years. Uh, he did. And when he did, everything in his life became much better spiritually because you know, he was contributing to breaking the four regulative principles. So, yeah, work in such a way that we follow our spiritual values and at the same time see how we can uh, use our talents to serve Krishna in devotional service. I an over answer no that was that was really good Guru Maharaj and I, and I really like the sort of last statement in the summary that you just gave as well you know configure your material life so that it becomes conducive to spiritual advancement that's really powerful for me thank you so much thank you Hare Krishna. Anyone else? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. <clears throat> Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, Guru Maharaj, I had uh, uh, read that happiness and pain is different in spiritual world. So that means pain does exist in spiritual world, but it is not uh, associated with material reasons. So I can understand that happiness is because of serving Krishna, but then how, uh, can you please explain how would pain be in spiritual world? How is, uh, how is pain in spiritual world? Yeah, the, the one who's serving Krishna the best. Radharani is famous amongst all the gopis. They know she's the best, the one who pleases Krishna the most. The best of transcendental pain, like Radharani was crying, right? When Krishna was living, that's a pain. That's a transcendental pain. Does that help, Archana? Yes, yes, good. Actually, here's one example. Like that, it's not that they try for, you know, for any kind of position. They're just trying to serve Krishna nicely. So amongst the, the inhabitants of Vrindavan, they all know, you know, who, who's serving Krishna the nicest, as, as the coward boys, who serves Krishna as the best, as the gopis. Nanda Maharaj, there are many, many living entities who serve Krishna in the parental affection, but Nanda Maharaj is the best in that category. Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness. I didn't, I didn't get the understanding from uh, Arjuna Siddhi's uh, question, could you just please clarify how that is painful? She wanted to know what is pain in the spiritual world. She no, she said fame, fame, fame. Fame, oh, okay. Thank no, you. No, no, Guru Maharaj, I said pain. And then I, I, what I understood was, it was that transcendental pain is, that, that's what I understood, right? It, oh, I thought you said fame. No, no, the pain, the suffering. Yeah, suffering is in the mode of separation from Krishna. Yeah. And even in the spiritual world, they, the mood of separation, you read the Shastras, you see how the gopis are always pining for Krishna's separation. The young gopis went to uh, Katyani in order to get Krishna as their husband. 
And so they were feeling great separation from Krishna. They had to wait before Krishna actually fulfilled their desires. So the longing, it's, it's transcendental pain. It's the pain of love. <laughs> Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and to your holiness. Is it also true that uh, competition in the spiritual world for service for Krishna can cause transcendental pain? Uh, competition inspires greater service. They compete to see who can serve Krishna the best. But it's not, it doesn't have any negativity about it. There's no envy, there's no enmity. They, they appreciate who is actually serving Krishna the best. And so they compete. It's like the cowherd boys will see Krishna and they'll all run and they'll say, I'll touch Krishna first. And the other one says, no, I'll touch Krishna first. So they're all running to see who can touch Krishna first. And then when I get there, the one who touched Krishna first says, I touched Krishna first. Another one says, no, no, you're just saying that I touched Krishna first. So, yeah, that competition is simply to please Krishna. That's all. Everything centers around pleasing Krishna. And Krishna is reciprocating and he's trying to please them. But the, the elements of love take different, it, love is like a snake, it's never straight, it's always kind of crooked. So there's intrigue, there's uh, hiding, there is apparent suffering, the pain, there's shyness, there's anger, all these things are there but they all contribute to the element of loving Krishna. What you see in this world is a reflection of what's in the spiritual world, but in the reflection, there's no substance. In the reality, all, everything is, is effulgently full of transcendental happiness. In the material world, it's just a perverted reflection or a reflection of the reality, and therefore the substance of happiness is, uh, is not there. Because without Krishna, happiness is not available. You read this, this pastimes of Krishna, there's so many adventures in, in his pastimes, but it all centers around the relationship between Krishna and his, his, his eternal associates. There's glorification, there's everything you see in this world, except for, you know, the, the negative stuff, is in the spiritual world. So even some of the apparent negative stuff is, is in the spiritual world, but it's not negative. There's transcendental lust, there's transcendental envy, there's transcendental uh, anger, transcendental greed. If we use material um, calculations and to place them on the spiritual realm, we will n never understand anything. The principle of spirituality in the spiritual world is Krishna is the center and everyone is working to somehow associate with and please Krishna.
हरे हरे कृष्णा महाराज और and we get a spiritual benefit but on a material platform pain we get that uh, doesn't help the uh, uh, neither the soul nor the body yeah material pain is just the, is just uh, the sufferings that come with having a material body and having material desires in spiritual world the pain is the longing for krishna the endeavor to to be with krishna endeavor to please krishna and uh, transcendental pain is always good for purification <laughs> increases our bhakti yeah increases bhakti uh, also earlier on you gave example one of your disciples had a grocery shop and uh, he was selling cigarette and alcohol so i like to say my situ- my uh, my situation was and um, i was not selling alcohol but i was selling lot of cigarette and the smoker sundries and my business was uh, based on that one depending on that one and i was not uh, practicing to be a devotee of the lord at that time so it was okay for me <laughs> Yeah. but later on when i joined uh, iscon and uh, came to real understanding uh, for the life or i mean the goal of the life and then i was always praying to krishna please get me out of this situation please get me i was on, just kept on repeating time to time <laughs> and yeah. waiting for waiting for my retirement and uh, this was uh, 1955 and uh, then krishna held it it took uh, number of years about 6 years oh sorry uh, <laughs> uh, oh no no i was uh, it, it, when i was praying when i was at age of 55 sorry and uh, it happened uh, at the age of 61 i got out that i got out that that business <laughs> I know you told me that time when I was sitting in your car and you told me I Oh right you remember that <laughs> Yeah You told me I you you retired <laughs> I said um, Yeah I remember that I was it was we were driving in the car together Yeah <laughs> uh another back going back to going back to that question Sila Prabhupada said material education is useless so my understanding is it it's a useless end of the day or uh, whatever you uh, i mean um, if you keep on spending time on a material uh, material education like so many degrees that's useless but uh, if you do it without within the requirements for your maintenance uh, i don't think it's useless because it's need it's a requirement <laughs> Well, whatever you, like we said the principle is if you have some occupation yeah. that's required in order to maintain the body then do that up to the what is necessary like that but the material education is bhakti vino bhakti yeah bhakti vino takur says it makes an ass out of the living being yeah you become stupid when you go to school so secular have, school yeah we have to understand it that's only for time being that's not our goal <laughs> our, our goal is uh, to obtain um, spiritual knowledge and uh, yeah the goal is to go back to godhead to go back to godhead yeah 
or qualify ourselves to go back. And uh, another question was, um, Krishna was saying, Arjuna, do your duty. So my understanding is, um, do your duty means only requirements. Uh, if, you, if you do anything more than that, that's the attachment. Yeah, that's it. Krishna says, you have a right to perform your duties, but you're not entitled to the results of activities. Never consider yourself the cause of the results of your activities. And never be attached to not doing your duty. And do it up to what is needed. And as it says, the goal of life is Krishna consciousness. And maintain yourself. Keep your health so you can perform the activities of devotional service in the best way. It's like my, my understanding is like if you have a child and goes to school and if you provide all the requirements like a child's uniform, transport, uh, pack lunch and uh, education fees, then that's good enough. But on top of that, if you give them pocket money and you don't know what they're going to do with that. So that's uh, pocket money. Uh, that's an att attachment, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> because you are providing all the necessities, so why they need a pocket money? <laughs> Prestige. And parents who give pocket money, they never ask where it's being spent. <laughs> it's just prestige. Yeah, prestige. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, so we stop here? All right, so we will, and tomorrow we'll do another verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, thank you very much, and soon we'll begin, uh, I think within a week or so, um, begins Purushottam Mas. Uh, we'll, uh, Purushottam Mas is a very interesting month. And we'll tell a little bit about the background and some of the activities of Purushottam Mas. It comes every 27 months and it begins this year on September 17th. Okay, thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Mother. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare. Thank you very much, Guru Dev. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna.